Hey, what's up you guys? My name is Nick and welcome to a new show I'm calling Technical. It's the show where Nick talks tech. I'm your host, Nick. So let's talk tech. <laughs> Today we're gonna to be talking about the aperture of the camera lens and how that can impact your images. So let's start off with a definition. What exactly is the aperture? The aperture is the opening in the camera lens which can expand or contract to focus light onto the sensor. It's the little hole in the middle of the lens that you can see. It can also be called the entrance pupil, kind of how like the pupil of your eye can expand or contract to let more or less light in. But I hate saying entrance pupil, so we're just gonna call it the aperture for now. To change the aperture on your camera, you can either go into manual mode or go into aperture priority mode, which is typically indicated by an A. There are three things that can happen when you make the aperture bigger. Number one, the image is going to get brighter. A larger hole means more light can pass through it. This can be very beneficial in low light situations, like when you're shooting at night. A fast lens, one that opens up really wide, can be a lifesaver in these kinds of situations. Number two, the depth of field is going to get shallower. As you can see, the background behind me is all blurry, and if anything gets up close to the camera, that's also going to be blurry too. The wider your aperture is, the less of your image will be in focus. This is a really easy way to isolate your subjects from distracting backgrounds. Opening up the aperture to blur the background is a quick way to make things look a bit more cinematic. Number three, things are going to get a little bit less sharp. Now this isn't a hard and fast rule, but something that you might see pop up from time to time, so it's good to be aware of. If you open up the aperture really wide, even subjects that are in focus might become a bit blurry. But again, every lens is different, and every situation is different too. So play around with what lenses you have to find something that you like. The opposite of these three things is also true. If you stop down the lens or close the aperture, the image is going to get darker. A smaller hole means less light can pass through it. The depth of field will increase, giving you more information in your foreground and background and generally things will become sharper. Some experts will tell you that there's a sweet spot of sharpness somewhere between f9 and f16, but again, every lens is different and every situation is different too. So now that you know what the aperture does, let's figure out what the f I'm talking about. Now I mean f numbers. The size of the aperture can be measured in terms of f numbers or f stops. An f stop is the ratio of the focal length of the lens to how large the diameter of the entrance pupil or aperture is. n equals f over d, where n is our f stop, f is the focal length, and the d is the diameter of the lens that we're using. You could really say that the f-stop, n, is really f slash n. What this formula is trying to say is that the aperture is one nth the size of the diameter, but it's way easier to just say fn. So an f2 is one half the size of the diameter of the lens that we're using. The f number is just the number like 2.8 or 4, while the f-stop is the f number written as a denominator, so f2.8 or f4. Now, how can we use this information? Well, there's a scale of f numbers that we can use to determine how much light will be in our scene. The scale starts at 1 and goes from 1, 1 1.4, 2, 2.8, 4, 5.6, 8, 11, 16, 22, and so on. I think I nailed it. I think I nailed that take. Each change in aperture is one stop of light difference. We'll talk more about stops of light in another video. Subscribe so you don't miss it. But for now, a stop of light is basically a relative doubling of light. So each change on the scale will change the amount of light in your scene by a factor of 2. For example, going from f2.8 to 2 will double the amount of light in your scene. There is a one stop of light difference. If you go from f4 to f2, you're going to quadruple the amount of light in your scene. Going from f4 to f2.8 will double the amount of light in your scene. And then going from f2.8 to 2 will double it again. So 2 times 2 equals 4. Some lenses will open up all the way to f1.4 or wider, while others will let you stop down to f22 or even f32. To find out how wide your lens can open, you can read the markings on it. It will say something like 1.8 or 3.5 to 5.6 if it's a variable aperture lens. A variable aperture lens is a zoom lens whose maximum opening size depends on its focal length. For example, this lens's widest aperture is at 4.5 when it's zoomed out at 55 millimeters. But if you zoom in all the way to 210 millimeters, it can only open up to f6.3. Whoa, 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 wait a second. f4.5, f6.3, these weren't on the scale you showed us before. And you're right, that's because apertures can do increments of one third of a stop of light as well as one stop of light. Thus you can get apertures of 4.5, 6.3, 1.8, and a whole bunch of others. Technically, there are also D-click lenses, which will allow you to choose any aperture in its range. It doesn't have to be limited to the ones that we mentioned earlier. So you can get an aperture like 1.55, or 3.14, or 7.7777. But I've only seen these in manual lenses. I don't know of any electronic lenses that do this. If you know, let me know in the comments below. I'd love to check them out one day. So that brings us to our big question of the day. Is this important? I think so. 
Making a small change to your aperture can change the way your image looks dramatically. Using this one feature can really help you dial in the look that you want. Plus, nowadays there are plenty of fast lenses on the market for relatively cheap. Well, that's it for this video. Did I get something wrong or leave something out? Let me know in the comments below. I put my sources in the description so you can fact check me. And while you're down there, make sure you like the video, ring that bell for notifications, and subscribe so you don't miss another video. I'll see you guys in the next one. Thanks for watching. Bonus fact, the lights that make up the aperture, the part of the lens that you can actually see, is called the diaphragm. And it's the blades of the diaphragm that expand or contract that give the aperture its shape.